record yeah. as fast as I'm sensing no. stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's why this week I had to get on and say certain things in the group. Because it just like, it was just like, I was jumping around. <laughs> I was like, I got to get this stuff off me. <laughs> Wondrous things when we find out. What could be better than heaven? <laughs> heaven coming to you? Yes. yes. I, I tell all preachers, well, you know, I get to talking to them, I said, can you show me in scripture where Paul talked about heaven? Crickets. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking about it. Wow. Oh, 2 Corinthians 12, the only place we have. He said, I knew a man that died and went to heaven. Am I right? Yes, sir. I know a man for 13 years, but he died and went to heaaven. What's he talking about himself? You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's what preachers do. But he talked about how he was being raptured. The same word that he said he was caught up. That's the rapture word. That's right. Only four times in the scriptures. And none of them, you left the earth physically. Oh, boy. Uh, I go back over here. <laughs> but the wondrous things. I lost a lot of friends over there. But they're, they're coming back around. Amen. See, the chuck wagon gang still got to come back around. <laughs> they they got to come back around too. Because it's the eternal purpose. God is working everything at the counsel of His will. It's not anything, my interpretation. It's His counsel at work. But the wondrous things is not just church membership. It can be wonderful, but it ain't the wondrous things. You know what the wondrous things are? Y'all know, because y'all sharp. What is it? Sonship! Sonship is a wondrous thing, because you got to understand the Father, the Godhead, have three expectations over His church. Three. God the Father always wanted to have what? A family. Amen. God the Son always wanted to have what? A bride. God, the Spirit, always wanted a temple. temple. Those are the wondrous things. Those are the things we seek after. Not leaving the earth to itself. It's wondrous because God wants to include you into the family name. See, we quote scriptures, the name of the Lord is strong time. Righteous, run into it and be safe. Sounds good, doesn't it? When you get the book of Revelation, 14 to talk about he put his name on us in their foreheads. Ah, the priest wanted. That's what he wants to do. He wanted, he wanted to have a pedigree in the earth to represent the kingdom. That's your whole journey. You gotta look at yourself and say, Am I, do I feel like I'm a, a, a black sheep in the family? Do I feel like I'm an orphan? Do I feel like uh, I'm a bastard? Do I feel like I'm a prodigal? Because those are all different things that happens in families. Or do I feel like I've been accepted in the blood? Yeah. Sure. Or do I feel like the elder son? Mm. But through it all, there's some wondrous things that the Father has for us. That's why he called us out. He never intended for us to take titles upon ourselves and names upon ourselves that he never gave. Right. He never wanted us to be Baptist, Lutheran. Episcopalian, non-denominational. He never wanted us to be that. That's why denominate means to make more. We pride ourselves in it, though. Man, I go to a non-denominational church. All our backgrounds, I, I'm Kojic. I was raised Kojic. I'm a die. People say that. I'm a die Kojic. Yeah. No, you ain't. You ain't gonna die, coach. It's probably in name. When you get to heaven, God ain't gonna ask you, uh, what's your religious affiliation? No. So you're dividing the whole, numbering the nations. And that's what we done. We numbered the nations. So the nation is divided. The house is divided. See, when we all get together under one umbrella, Jesus Christ is Lord. You talking about the earth groaning? You see, some of us secretly want to see the manifestation of God. Am I right? We need 
hearing like yesterday. We need blind eyes open like when? Yesterday. yesterday. We need deaf ears open like when? Yesterday. yesterday. We need to see the ministry that Jesus operated in. Like when? Yesterday. Yesterday. Amen. The world is languishing. It's in complete chaos and turmoil. Because nobody wants to stand up, step up to the plate. Can't you hear it in the spirit? Yeah. Mm. Who shall I say it? But which one of us is going to say, here I am, send me. So we'll settle out of court. Wow. If I can just get one of those five gifts, I'll be good. Apostle, probably, that's, that's, that's me. It's, a, it's an expiration date on those five. Until we come into the unity of the faith. That's why I ain't done hope. That's what they call me. But I'm a son before anything. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That's what, that's what I hear in my belly continuously from the Father. When he talks to me, he'll call me with my title. He ain't worried about my DDSs and PhDs. Come on now, that's good. Amen. Those are fig leaves. Yes, sir. God want to know the man that's on the inside, the hidden man that's on the inside of us. That's the man he communicates with. Spirit bearing witness with our spirit. He wants to minister to that part. Amen. Ooh, that eternal part. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I'm all over the place, but I'm hoping I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. So we need to ask God, open up our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of his law. And the law is, of course, the Torah, so we'll leave that alone. But then, you know, uh, Psalms 11998. Yeah, Psalms 11998. I don't know if I said that. I'm going to say 198. It ain't on 198. 98. I'm almost done, you guys. I got six minutes. Is that okay? I noticed on the videos, I'm, I get, I'm, I've been giving five videos lately, so. Hey, who's counting? <laughs> Yeah. I understand your ear can only take what your rear can take. Once I start seeing y'all swaying back and forth, y'all you know, gotta sway. I start moving around, I start hearing pages moving, books moving. I said, it's time to fold them up. Time to fold them up. You got to get done. They, they check it out. <laughs> Look at this though. Though through your commandments has made what? Me wiser than my enemies. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Don't y'all want that? Yes, sir. Yes. So God make me wiser than my yes. enemies. How are you going to yes. do it? Through his word. Yes. When you make up your mind to adhere to his word, and you keep looking into that word, you keep saying, oh, my God. And then the wondrous things come to your mindset, come to your mind, and then all of a sudden you start beholding things you couldn't behold on your own. Then God said, I'm going to show you a strategy on how to defeat the enemy. Anybody want to defeat some th stuff in your life? Yeah, there's some stuff that got the upper hand. God said, if you get in my word, I'll show you how to be wiser than those things. I'll show you how to invite, uh, not invite, but uh, avoid those things. It'll it show you how to stay away from certain things. Yes, that word on the inside of you, when people come to you that ain't right for you, it'll all of a sudden sit off. Warning! Yes, yes, yes. Man, it, won't, look, it won't be. <laughs> See, because we want a prophetic, we're going to say the Lord. But no, no, your belly, the unction that you receive from the Holy One, lets you know, uh uh, that's off limits. Yes. You don't need to hook up with them. You don't need to go over there. Yes, that person ain't right for you. I'm here to tell you. That's why it says in Colossians 3.13, it says, let the word dwell richly in you. It's, go to Colossians 3.16. Look at this, y'all. Catch this stuff, man. Amen. Then we're close. We got, we got a little time. Oh, Lord, I thought I was going to get y'all into the eating portion, but I'm going to show you guys how to eat this thing, how to get it in your spirit, how to get it assimilated. 3.3.3.3.3.16. Word 
of Christ do what? Dwell in you richly. That word means uh it means that the word richly, well, richly means increased and abundance. But to let the word dwell, it means it becomes an umpire. Anybody, anybody ever watch sports? Yes, how, how many know there's umpires? Yes, Standing behind the, the bat, oh, the, the catcher, right? Uh -huh. When the ball comes, you say, strike! Ball! Strike! Ball! Out! You're out! You're out of there! <laughs> That's what we need! We need the word! That dwell in us richly in all wisdom become an umpire. To, to tell you, don't go over there, don't talk to him, don't say that. But we have no control. We say it the way we feel. And then we pick up the pieces afterwards. And we even really tell ourselves that. We just jump into stuff, say stuff, off the handle. No one is malicious with malicious intent. We don't care. We just spaz out. I pick up the piece of flip. But sometimes the damage yeah. is so great. Yeah. Ain't nothing left. Yeah. And even if they still stay with you, it has brought harm to you. Churches, church splits, all that stuff. Because people just feel like it's their right to say certain things. Yeah, it's constitutional. <laughs> it ain't right spiritually. It's not for your well-being. Some things need to be able to dwell in you, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. All of those things that should happen. But I, I want to just highlight that first portion. An umpire. It needs to be in us richly. Why? Because it's going to make us wiser than our enemies. Yeah. Go to Psalm 17 and 4. We'll close right here. 17 and 4. 17 and 4. I God wants us to be wiser than our enemy. That's why Jesus was able, whenever the Pharisees would come up against him, to catch him in his word, how many know he would turn it back on? And say, who baptism is this? And he would tell them and say, hey, you tell me. Because they, they, they knew if they had to say it from heaven or for John, they were going to be in trouble. Because they, they had a squeeze play. So they said, you know what, I'm my bag. That's when they, you know. Then he, <laughs> 